Hi, welcome to Hills Church, and I'm Jamie, and this summer we have been doing a series called Mixtape, where we have taken messages over the years that have really shaped our church. And I just happened to um, have the honor to speak a couple of years ago on a message. And so today I will be sharing that message with you. It's called Go Deep. And um, if you want to grab your Bibles right now and open up to Luke 5, we can follow along as I read. And we're going to be starting in verse 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. And then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put a little out from the land. He sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled their partners in their other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. And then when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me. I am a sinful man, O Lord. When I heard this passage, um, I was working a job where I was listening to pastors. And as I was listening to this particular passage being read, um, the Holy Spirit started stirring something up in me. And I actually thought it was for some friends of ours that we had just been been with. And so I had been texting them. And after I finished texting them, I just felt that little tap of the Holy Spirit on my shoulder. And you see, at the time, life was just a routine. My job was a routine. Our church was meeting in a school. We had to set up and tear down. That was a routine. I mean, we had everything just so, so lined up that there was really no room for, um, anything adventurous in that time. And I just felt at that moment, the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder. And so he said to me, Jamie, what's your deep? Well, little did I know that Jeff was actually getting a phone call from a pastor whose church was meeting in a building that they were asking or inviting us to um, move into. And at that moment, I was like, well, Lord, I don't know what our deep is. I, we're doing everything you've asked us to do, and I don't know what else to do. And he said, you know, trust me, trust me. And so about a few days later, I just happened to find out this Jeff had had this phone call. And, and so it was kind of a defining moment in our church that we were having to step out in faith. And as I began to kind of reflect on it, I realized that you know, we, we, it's so easy for us to get into a routine, but you know, when Jesus shows up, he changes the routine. You know, the problem with routine is that there's no faith required in that. And these fishermen were doing their daily routine. They were, you know, washing their nets. You know, they'd been out all night. They come back. They've got to repair the nets. They've got to wash the nets and they put them away. And the problem with routine is that we become complacent and we, we get stagnant. We become bored. You know, it's, there's no fun in it. And, you know, we, we as people are creatures of habit. And, you know, Jeff just did a, a, um, uh, one minute videos, 21 days to change. And it's, you know, said, they say it takes 21 days for us to create new, new patterns and new habits. And, you know, we need to learn to change. It's, it's good for us to have changes in our life. And what's so interesting is that one verse later in verse three, Jesus literally got into Peter's business. He, it says he stepped into the boat and that's what what brought some change into Peter's life. You know, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us many times, he speaks to us all the time, but sometimes we just ignore it because one, we don't think it's him or two, we just are, we just don't feel that he really pays attention to us. 
but life can change in the matter of a verse. He, Jesus wants to come into your life because he wants to do great things through you. He wants to do something great. And when he does that, it's because he has a timing for you. In, in Luke uh, verse 4, it says, Jesus stopped speaking. Well, for me, when I thought about that, it's like, hmm, Jesus had to speak the word first before he could actually put this in motion. You know, our timing is not his timing. We, you know, we always joke that God is 11th hour God. But you know, in Proverbs it says, we can make a plan, but it's God's purpose that prevails. It's never in our timing. It's always in God's timing. And I think it's interesting that Jesus spoke the word before he had this encounter with Peter. And it just shows how much the word is part of of change. You have to be in the Word to know when it is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. If you're not in the Word, you have nothing to gauge it with. It's a filter that we that we can use to see if God is really speaking. But you know, Peter says to him, you know, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. And there's a a, if you're looking at your Bible right now, you'll see that there's a semicolon there. And I wonder how many times we do this. You're, you're, you think something and all of a sudden a thousand thoughts go through your mind. And I'm wondering if that semicolon is there because Peter paused for a moment thinking, I am exhausted. I, I can't go out now. I've been up all night. I'm ready to go home and go to bed. I don't want to go back out fishing again. But, you know, because most, most of the time fishing happens at night in the dark, not, not in the morning hours when he's coming in from, from fishing all night. He was probably exhausted, but you know, the Lord showed me something in that as well. Why do you think Jesus caught him at that time of the day? He was tired. Well, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, His power is made perfect in our weakness. It was in Peter's weariness that Jesus was able to show his power. And I believe that's why Jesus came when Peter was at his tiredest. <laughs> you know, it's often when we surrender to his timing that we find ourselves in that place of maybe weariness. But you know, it's these are the times where we have to have faith. Faith is risky. Faith is scary. You know, it says, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were breaking. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to help them. You know, faith requires partners. We need one another. It's it's that gathering of the body of Christ that, that, I mean, that's why we're a body, because we need one another. We can't do this alone. You know, um, in this time of COVID, it, you know, they, the slogan is, we're in this together, which may be true, but we're not together because we can't be with our loved ones. We can't be with our friends. We can't, we, in fact, look, we're not even having church. We're having to do it this way. You know, it's, it's in these times that we have to have faith. Our faith matches with one another so that we can be together. And we were watching on a documentary a couple weeks ago that it was such a picture to me of the Spartan warriors when they would fight they have these big shields of faith that they would carry and they would hold them in a way that would cover half of their the person next to them and half of them and then the person next to them their their shield would cover them and it and it created a wall so that the enemy's arrows could not penetrate their their group and this is how they won their battles and it was such a picture to me of faith and how together we cover one another and we we hold on to each other and we create a barrier so the enemy can't get to us and instead we just have the opportunity to see God at work in our lives Peter needed his friends to help him to catch this this great catch you know it wasn't just Peter who received that reward the partners who helped in those fishing boats also received in that great catch. You know, there's a there's a message in, or actually in John 21, there's a similar story where Jesus shows up after his death 
to Peter. Peter was a little distraught. He was, he felt ashamed. He had denied Jesus, but Jesus showed up and called Peter again, throw your nets to the other side of the boat. And this time Peter didn't question him. He actually threw his nets over and they, he jumped in the water and swam out to Jesus. But the encounter he had that day was Jesus told him, feed my sheep. That was a, I believe that was a that day in Luke was a prophetic word for what Peter was to do later on in his life. He was catching men um, later in his life where he was catching fish before Jesus entered his life. You know, it brings me back to when we had this, um, when I had this moment with the Lord that day sitting at my desk at work we had this opportunity to move to this school building and it was a big step of faith for our church because we didn't have the means to be able to do that but the Lord provided he provided and he told us to throw our nets to the other side because when we have faith it brings blessing and the deeper that we go the greater the blessing faith is pleasing to the Lord it says in Hebrews faith is the only thing that moves God not our whining and not our our pouting it's faith faith is what makes God act and when they came to the boats they began to sink is what it says in verse 7 the boats were so full they began to sink now that's a good thing for them but right now it seems like we're pretty deep in this this COVID life we've been living we're pretty, it's pretty heavy. There's a lot of job loss. There's, there's all kinds of things happening. And you may feel like you're sinking. I know personally there have been moments I've felt like I've been sinking. But you know, it's okay because Jesus has us. God has us if we have the faith and if we reach out to one another. You know, our net doesn't look like it did even just five months ago when we were meeting at church. Our net now is the internet no pun intended but it is it's that's our new net and how how can we reach others for for Jesus and the gospel and this is the way that God has this is the net God's chosen for us to use in this time and it's in these times where we get to see the great catch it's not our experience it's not our expertise it's It's not just what we know to do. It's at his word. We have to do what he asks us to do because he will do what he says because he's not a God who who lies. And the more impossible a situation looks, the more possible it is for God. Throughout the Bible, God used small people to do big things. Gideon, David, Esther, Mary. She was 15 years old and she gave birth to the Savior. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things, and He wants to use you in this time. And I want to leave you with these three questions that this week I would ask you to pray about and bring to Him. What is your net? Is it ready? And are your part, who are your partners? What is your net? Is it ready? And who are your partners? It's time for a great catch. Let me pray. Father, we just thank you for this time today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we can stand on your promises. Even when life seems heavy, even when our boats are filled with blessing, Lord, sometimes we feel the weight. But Father, we just thank you that you have worked miracles in our lives. And Lord, we ask your forgiveness for not always um, recognizing them. So, Lord, I just pray for my friends out there today, Lord, anyone who might feel a place that they're discouraged or they're feeling weak or weary. Father, I pray right now that your spirit would show up in their lives right there, whether they're in their living room, they're in their car, wherever they're watching. We just ask that your spirit would show up and we give glory and honor to you in this day. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, I thank you so much for joining us today. If you would like to have some prayer or you would like to um, give your offering or if you just want information on Hills Church, you can go to hillschurchoc.com, hillschurchoc.com and you can enter your prayer request there. You can do your tithe online 
and you can get more information about our church. Um, and if you'll just stay tuned, we have a, a little bit of worship just to kind of close out this time together. And I just, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.